Okay, in alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. I want to welcome everybody here to the Sunnah Followers Kids Program. And I know I have been missing an apps and action for this class for a couple of sessions. And I apologize. You know, we all got somebody to report to. I had to report to Amina Fresno. Oh, yeah, she's the president. I had to explain to her why I missed a couple of classes. You know, she told me I have to do better as a teacher. I have to learn how to go to sleep at night instead of staying up all night on the internet making videos. Oh yeah, she reprimanded me. I had to go to the president's office. So I apologize to the children, you know, for being remiss. But alhamdulillah, I'm here today. And mashallah, we're going to be continue covering uh, uh, what it means to believe in Allah. And we're again, for those of you who may be new tuning in, we're studying from the book uh, Dunya, written by one of my students, Abdullah Kurt. And this is a beautiful book and everyone should go to Amazon and purchase it. It only costs thirteen dollars. And it speaks about, you know, how what it is that we believe in as Muslims and how to incorporate our belief in Allah, living and, and keep our Muslim identity while living in a non-Muslim society and environment. And we talked about what it means to believe in Allah. We spoke about what it means to believe in the prophets of Allah. And today we're going to continue this. We spoke about the importance of seeking knowledge of Islam. And tonight we're going to continue with the importance of, let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen. So everyone can see, and y'all see I did my work. Uh-oh. How Islam encourages, again, when we're seeking knowledge, how we have to focus on learning the religion of Islam. And that's the problem with a lot of Muslims today. We're all Muslim. But do we really understand our religion? Do can we answer basic questions about the religion like why do we pray? Why do we fast? Why do we dress the way we dress? Why is it that we don't drink? Why is it that we don't uh have girlfriends and things like that? So this is why Islam encourages us as Muslims to learn our religion. And that's what we're going to be speaking about uh, today. We have to ponder this hadith from the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that seeking knowledge of this religion is obligatory upon every Muslim. And what does it mean when we say it's obligatory? That means that it's something that we have to do. Every Muslim has to learn the religion of Islam. We should know why we pray. We should know why we fast. We should know why we dress the way uh, uh, we dress. For those of us, of us that don't know the religion, that uh, cannot explain why, you know, then that means that we're falling short. 
we're falling short in being a believer. So again, the believer is committed to learning the religion. Yes, we go to school to be a doctor. We go to school to be nurses. We go to school to be architects and engineers. But we don't put our knowledge of the world over our knowledge of Allah. As we're going to school to get a degree so we can be a doctor, a nurse, an engineer, we want to also continue to learn our religion. Every Muslim should have a teacher. You should all, all of us should have our own personal teacher. I got mine. You have yours. I'm your teacher. Everybody should have their own personal teacher that can teach them this religion. So the true believing Muslim is committed to learning the religion of Islam and they understand uh, what it is that they learn as well, okay? Also, they make it their priority. Yes, I'm gonna be a nurse. I'm gonna be a doctor, inshallah, but I'm not gonna ever fall short and seeking understanding of my deen, okay? So we put this as our emphasis. We make our emphasis on learning the religion. And when we talk about learning the religion, what things do we learn? We just don't learn Arabic. A lot of Muslims think that just because they learn how to read the Quran in Arabic, they've learned Islam. No, that's nothing. Arabic is a language, it's not a religion. Arabic is a language. I can go to school and learn Arabic. I can learn French. I can learn English. That ain't going to bring me close to a law. Okay. We have to learn the meaning of the Quran. The meaning of the Quran, not just how to read it. A law made reading Arabic easy. I can read Arabic. Anybody can learn how to read Arabic. That's easy. Okay. But the hard thing is to understand what you're reading. So we spend all of our lives learning how to understand the Quran. And again, the prophet Muhammad taught us that you will never understand the Quran until you learn the Hadith. So we have to also learn the Hadith, learn the meaning. Uh, uh, Awa, can you do that? Yeah, thank you, Awa. Um, you learn the meaning, learn the meaning of the Quran by learning the Hadith. And by learning the Hadith, you're also learning the history of the religion. You're also learning about the companions of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're learning about the prophet himself. You're learning his life story. So, and all of that, all of that is what you need to learn. If you're a girl, you need to learn the rules of menses. If you're a girl, you need to learn the rules of marriage the conditions of marriage. Every parent should teach their children, their girls, the conditions of a valid marriage contract. You, Every girl should know what is the role of a woman in Islam. Every girl should learn what the role of a man is in Islam. And for the boys, the same thing. The boys need to learn the rules of marriage the role of a man, the role of a husband. What does it mean to be a provider? What does it mean to be a maintainer in Islam? These are things you have to learn when we talk about seeking religious knowledge and then applying it. Everything that we learn about this religion, we're supposed to apply it to our personal lives. You don't just memorize it but you act upon what you memorize and then you share that knowledge with others. Everything we learn, you wanna share it with your siblings and share it with your close friends. Listen to what Allah says and the interpretation of the meaning. Allah says, and among them are those who pray. They make dua, they say, oh Allah, give us in this world that which is good, and give us in the hereafter that which is good and protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. So here we can see as Muslims, we want the best of this world and we want to live the, we want the, we want to live the best lives we can in this world. 
and we want to be of the people of paradise. So Islam is a balance. In order to succeed and reach the best in this world, yes, you have to have knowledge of, uh, of the world, secular knowledge, but you have to also balance that out with knowledge of the religion. So belief in Allah, I know that everything that happens in this world, good and bad, comes from Allah. Allah is the creator of evil and Allah is the creator of good. That's important to understand because there are a lot of Muslims out there that think that Allah is not the creator of everything. They think he only creates the good, that we men create the evil or shaitan. No, no, no. Shaitan doesn't have the power to do nothing unless Allah gives it to him, just like we don't have the power to do anything unless Allah wills it, okay? Allah creates good and evil, but we turn to Allah and we seek his guidance. As we talked about in the last class, everything that happens in this world, good and evil happens because Allah willed it. If Allah, you're not gonna be a doctor unless Allah allows it. You're not going to be a nurse unless Allah allows it. You're not going to graduate. You're not even going to live to see tomorrow unless Allah allows it. So we call upon Allah. We seek his guidance. We seek his protection. And we ask Allah to give us the things that we need in this world. And at the same time, we ask Allah that if should we die, that we die upon a state, no state other than Islam. So there's nothing wrong with seeking the good things in this world. And all of us as Muslims should fear the hellfire. Should I fear people? Should I care what people say about me because I wear hijab? Should I fear what the people say about me because I'm Muslim? No, I don't fear the people. But we should fear Allah first and foremost and also then feel and then Fear the hellfire that Allah created as a punishment for those of us who disobey him, as a punishment for those of us who give in to our desires. So these are characteristics of a believer. The believer seeks knowledge of his religion so he understands what his purpose in life is. And he lives his life in this world seeking the good things here wanting the best for himself while calling upon a law for help, for guidance and support. And that's why it's important for us to maintain our regular salats. You have to pray your prayers too. Just like seeking knowledge of this religion is an obligation, praying those five daily prayers are too. So you don't want to be remiss in your prayers. Just like you don't want to be remiss in wearing hijab. Just like you don't want to be remiss in obeying your parents. So the believer is a person who believes in Allah, trusts in him, and seeks the good in everything. Y'all understand that? This is some powerful stuff for you kids to put into uh, practice. Because again, our religion is balanced. And it's all about trying to be the best you can be and the strongest that you can be. Remember the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than the weak one. Why? Because the strong believer, the strong person is the one that can resist his desires. The strong person is the one that doesn't give in to his desires. The strong person is the one that can say no to drugs. When the kids in school come to you trying to get you to drink, trying to get you to smoke marijuana, you can say no, that's the strong believer. The weak one would do it. The strong believer doesn't imitate the non-Muslim kids either. The non-Muslim kids walk around, the girls walk around looking like Cardi B. The boys walk around looking like Jay-Z. The believers say, I don't care about a Cardi B. I don't care about a Jay-Z. I'm going to wear my thobe and my tabush. If you a boy, I'm going to wear my kimar and my abaya. 
if you're a girl and not care. So the strong believer is more loved by Allah for that reason, because he resists the temptations of the other people around him. He resists what they say and he remains strong. He remains firm. Does everybody understand that? School is about to start. School is starting up next week for a lot of you. You're going to have to go back to school. A lot of you go to school around non-Muslim children still. You need to talk to your parents about that. Talk about having your parents homeschool you. Tell your parents to, to go to SafaUSA.org and try to uh, uh, get you in virtual homeschool. Okay? But until then, for those of you who do have to go to school, you're going to be around these non-Muslim kids. They're going to come back to school with a lot of bad behaviors that they done picked up. For those of you girls, you're going to be surprised when you go to school to see a lot of girls pregnant. Oh, yeah. How many of you are in the fifth grade and you got one or two students that are pregnant? Oh, yeah. You're going to see a lot of girls 10, 10 and 11 years old coming back to school pregnant. Shows what type of a summer they had. Okay, but don't you fall into that game. You know, you come back to school with your abaya on, your kimar on, you walk with your head up high. And when they ask you, why do you dress this way? You tell them, because my Lord loves this. This is what my Lord demands of me. And I live each day of my life to please my Lord, not to please the people around me. And you be proud of that. When the boys ask you, why do you wear that dress? You correct them. You tell them this is not a dress. It's called a thobe. And this thing on my head is called a kufi or a tabush. And I dress this way because my Lord likes it. And you be proud as a young man to say that. You know, don't uh, 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 give in to what these kids are going to uh, say to you. Trust in a law. The believer always trusts in a law. The believer always seeks a law's help and protection. When you wake up in the mornings to make fajr, make sure that you recite the phallic and the nas in each, per, each rakat. I mean, in, in each rakat. In the first rakat, you recite El Fatiha and then the phallic. And the second rakat, you recite El Fatiha and the Nas, because those two surahs are protections. They'll protect you. They're protection from what's not meant for you. Allah will give you the strength to hold your head up high and deal with these non-Muslim kids who are coming back to school from a summer of sex drugs, and all other kind of bad behavior. I used to be an elementary school teacher. Oh, yeah, I used to substitute. Boy, every year, my fifth graders, I did fifth grade. Oh, my God, I'd have at least two, two or three girls pregnant. Some of my fifth grade students, the boys were on marijuana. They come to school high, smelling like weed. Oh, yeah, summer. All right, so, you know, you trust in Allah and be patient. Be patient. The believer is patient and accepting of the Carter of Allah. They understand that everything that happens is in accordance to what Allah wants to happen. And the believer never loses hope. When you go back to that calf for school, you know, understand that you're going there with one purpose in mind, and that's to learn. And then you're going home. You're not going there to make friends with anybody because we don't make friends with the non-Muslims like that. We're nice to them. We're polite to them. But do we take them home with us? No. Do we go to their houses? No. Do we interact with them off the school? No. I want you also to ponder this verse. Allah says in the Quran and the interpretation of the meaning and seek by the means of what Allah has given you. The home of the hereafter 
and do not forget your share in this world and do good as Allah has done good to you and do not desire corruption in this world. And indeed, Allah doesn't like corruptors. So again, for those of you going to the non-Muslim schools, again, talk to your parents about that. You're not going to school to join up with any gangs. You're not going to school to be with the bad boys, to be with the good, the bad girls. No, Allah doesn't like people who spread evil or spread mischief. People who bully other kids because one kid is disabled. One kid is in a wheelchair. One kid has, has a handicap. So you're going to make fun of them. We don't do that. We help the disabled. We help those who are less fortunate than us. So this verse in the Quran encourages us, you know, to take advantage of the blessings that Allah has given us. Allah has blessed you with legs to walk with. Allah has blessed you with ears to hear with. Take advantage of that by helping those who are less, for, less uh, fortunate. So as Muslims, it's all about seeking knowledge of our religion, knowledge of our religion, of what Allah expects from us. Allah wants kindness from us. Allah wants us to be respectable to others. Allah wants us to fulfill our obligations to him. Allah wants us to obey him. Allah wants us to stay away from those people and those things that will take us away from him. So I want all of you kids to keep that in mind because many of you will start school tomorrow or next week. So now let's give you a quiz. First question. What are some things that we should learn about our religion as a Muslim? We talk about how, talked about how seeking knowledge of the religion is an obligation. What are some things that we should, are obligated to learn about our way of life? Go ahead. Who would like to answer? Sister Asma, Yasmin, I mean, Asma and Najma, go ahead. The rules about menses. Mashallah. The girls need to learn about menses. And I know you girls learn because your mom's a nurse. What else? What's another thing, Najma? I mean, the other sister. What's the other, another thing? Uh. Sanaya, San oh, wait a minute, Sanaya, go ahead. Sanaya, what's something that you should learn as a Muslim about your religion? Yeah. How to be... How to be what? How to be, um, how to be good and how to... Pay attention to your teacher and 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 may and make you do good manners. Good job. She gave a lot of good answers. You should learn how to be good and kind. You should learn to pay attention to your teachers when they're teaching you. And most importantly, like she said, learn good manners. Learn how to be respectable. These are the things that our religion teaches us. It's not just about no learning Arabic. It's about learning the character, the actions, the behavior of a true Muslim. Good job, Sanaya. Mashallah. Tahira. Well, let me hear from you, Tahira. What are some more things we should learn about our religion as a Muslim? You should learn about marriage. Oh, yeah. Is your mom teaching you about marriage right now? Yeah. Yeah. It's time. It's time. We Muslims need to learn about marriage, especially when we, for those girls and boys who reach puberty. If you are the age of puberty, if you're 12 years old, any of you that's 12 years old, all of you that are 12 and older should be learning about marriage. Your moms should be teaching you about a marriage, about the importance of getting married, about what constitutes a valid marriage contract, 
and all of that because when those hormones start playing with you because you're a teenager and it's fine we get married oh yeah your mom will help you with that if you boys feel you know antsy you girls are feeling antsy you sit down and talk with your parents because marriage is good and clean your parents would rather see you married to another muslim a girl or another Muslim boy, if you are a, a, a girl uh, married to a boy, if you're a boy married to a girl, not LGBTQ, we don't do that. So you talk to your parents about marriage. Okay, Corday, what's something else that uh, you should learn about your religion as a Muslim? Brother Corday, go ahead. Exactly. We sh all of us should learn about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he taught us how to act. He taught us what good behavior is. He's an example for us. Learning about him, you're learning what Allah expects from us, how to act, how to talk, how to behave. So mashallah, very good answers there. Let's look at the next question. Which of the following is true? You should only want the good in the hereafter and not expect anything good in this world. Or you should want to have everything good in this world and not worry about the hereafter. Or you should want the, both the best of this world and the best of the hereafter. Go ahead, Asma Najma. You should want both of the best of this world and the and the hereafter. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with her? Yes. Yes, I agree. Mashallah. Yes, Good job. That's what it is. And that's why I love Uthman. May Allah be pleased with him so much. Uthman, he was a companion of balance. Uthman will be the, four, the third person to enter paradise after the prophet Muhammad. Uthman is the third best of this nation. Great role model for you young men. Uthman, he was a multimillionaire. He was very rich. And he liked nice things. And he balanced it. Okay? He asked for the good in this world. And he wanted the good in the hereafter. So he led a very nice life. He had nice houses. You know, nice clothing everything within balance and that's what we should be like okay what about this when bad things happen to us we should think and say if only i hadn't have done this it would not have happened is that statement true or false when bad things happen to us we should stop and say if only i hadn't have done this or if only i hadn't have done that it wouldn't have happened. What do you think? Go ahead, Tahira. It's false. Do you guys agree with her? She said it's false. Yes. 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 Sister um, uh, uh, Sanaya, why is it false? Why is it that we should not say that, Sanaya? Sanaya, why come we shouldn't say, if only I hadn't have done this? Because maybe it's a mean of forgiveness from Allah. That's true. And what else? Go ahead, Corday. You shouldn't say that because you're the one who did the bad actions. Exactly. And by denying that, we're, this is a form of, of associating partners with a law, guys. It's shirk. Sure. If only I hadn't have done this. If only I hadn't have done that. It's like you're denying the reality. Dear Monty, you want to add? Go ahead, dear Monty. If you do something bad, then a law might punish you in the hellfire. Exactly. That's why we have to really, really be careful of the choices we make in this world, guys. If we deliberately, intentionally choose to do wrong things, that's why Allah doesn't accept our good deeds. If a person deliberately, intentionally commits sins, 
None of your good deeds are other good deeds are accepted. Why? Because you're showing that you have no fear of Allah. And as the prophet Muhammad said, in order to be a believer, you have to have love, hope, and fear of Allah at all times in your heart. So I'm not wearing hijab or I'm selling drugs. Do you think Allah is accepting my prayers, accepting my, your fast? No. I'm sitting around saying, if only I hadn't smoked this, this marijuana joint. You smoked it. You can't take it back. Learn from it. Repent from your sin. But don't sit around saying, if only I hadn't. Because that's questioning the Qadr of Allah. So, mashallah, this was a, a very good uh, uh, a part of the book. And so now we're going to move on to the second half of the class. Let's look at the hadith for today. This is hadith number 43 from the book on Islamic behavior and discipline by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. Check out this hadith. It's narrated by Abu Dar. He said that the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, do not consider any good deed as being insignificant. In other words, don't look down on the good deeds that others do. Even a smile is something good. Subhana Allah. This is one of my favorite hadiths because as human beings, oftentimes we find ourselves, you know, uh, judging other people in a bad way. Uh, somebody gives you a gift, you know, uh, subhana Allah. Instead of you saying, thank you, mashallah, you're going to look and say, what do I need with this? And throw it, throw it away, throw it down. You know, that, that might have been some, the last bit of money she had to buy that. Okay? Don't look down on the gifts that other people give you. Or don't look down on the good deeds other people do. Even a smile. I could be having a terrible day. I can be feeling very depressed. And then I happen to pass by a Muslim sister in the grocery store and she just smiles at me. That one smile of acknowledgement can change my whole perception of that day. So this hadith brings about a lot of benefits. Number one, never look down on the good things that others do for us. And remember that all good deeds are actions of charity. And whenever we do anything good, Allah will reward us for it, anywhere from 10 to 700 times. And also what appears to be a big deal to you may not be a big deal to someone else. What you consider to be a little deal may be a bigger deal to someone else. So mashallah, this was our class for today. And again, um, I apologize uh, for being uh, uh, remiss. You know, in my class, I was so tied up, you know, with so much going on, on the website with these adults that I had to, I couldn't wake up for the kids class a couple of times. But mashallah, I'm trying to work on that. You know, even Layla Nasheba has a lot to work on. Uh, you know, I made sure I went to sleep last night. I did not stay up doing videos and uh, just so I wouldn't miss this class. And I want to also remind everyone that we have Brother Mukhtar's class tonight at seven. He's doing the Caliphate of Khalid bin Walid, the life, I mean the life, not the Caliphate, the story of Khalid bin Walid, his uh, life story. So make sure that all of you join at seven o'clock tonight so that you can learn about Khalid bin Walid. So I want to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session of the Sooner Followers Kids program and make sure you read the next chapter, which I think is chapter 10 of the book, Dunya. And I'll see you guys next week. But for the rest of you here on YouTube and Facebook, I'll see you guys at six because I have the six o'clock class on diluting Wella Well Barra. So, Supana Kala Huma Wabi Hamdika, a shadow on Laila Haila Anta, Stock the Ruko Watubu Lake, Assalamu Alaikum, everyone.
Waalaikumsalam. 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 Masya Allah.